Welcome to the Trippy Podcast. Today is the 31st of March, 2023, and we are here to talk about travel stuff. Yeah. Fishness. Sounds like a sounds like a, a worthy endeavor for a travel today company. Is, we don't we, what's the name of the episode today? I really liked your your naming convention last week. What's oh, uh, the Spring Break counter programming? Yeah. What is today's episode's name? Mm, I think today is going to be Monkey Business. Monkey business. Or the elephant in the room. Monkey business. No, I'm writing this down now. I kind of like or the elephant, the, the elephant in the room. There you go. Okay. All right. I like that. It's written. Good. Okay. We wrote it. Okay. Done got writ. <laughs> Word. <laughs> yeah. All right. You ready? Do, what is anybody ready? sound effect do you, are you hovering over right now? <laughs> <laughs> Evil laugh is a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Where do honeybees go on road trips when they have to go to the bathroom? Oh God. I can't even imagine. They stop at the BP. <laughs> oh, come on. That was not great. Oh, it wasn't meant to be great. It was meant to be good. Ugh. It's meant to at least be like guffawable. Guffawable? Yeah. In mean, what universe would that elicit a guffaw? A kerfuffle? That's, no, that's a fight, hon. A Donnybrook, then. Still a fight. Hey. Although, if you told that joke at, like, a stand-up thing, you might end up in a Donnybrook. Just saying. That's... People be like, I pay for this? Come on, buddy. It was cute. I will give you cute. How's that? It's a free podcast, folks. You get what you pay for. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my god. I we are hot everywhere. That's we're we're way in the clip. All right. I'm gonna have to uh, let's let's bring down bring down our the so loudness our mama Coco there. Thank you, Blake Symphony. Thank you, Blake Symphony, for, for all s- of the artistry and music that you bring into this world. We love it. Seriously, it's good stuff. Big 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 ups to that. So. You always say big ups. What does that big mean? Oh, boy, I don't know. Maybe it means. Maybe you should look shit up before you just. Sorry, oh my God. I bombed it. Uh, you can throw it in. Get it in post. Get it in post. Get you in post. Hold on. I'm looking this up. It's, it, it's, it's a compliment. How to like, use big ups correctly by the grammarist. Oh boy. It's an idiom that entered American English and less conspicuously British English around 1990. It has several meanings, but the one in the U S and Britain where it started, where it started in hip hop culture, it's mainly used to acknowledge someone or express reject. I'm sorry, respect or approval. (laughs) My eyes are a little dry today. See, It usually works as a noun. I was, yeah, props. For instance, a performer on stage might send big ups to a friend in the audience, or we might give big ups to grandma for her amazing green bean casserole. Oh, green bean casserole, yum. I've never had that. Never? Never. Sadness. Not a once. So good. So good. I, I, right. I love me some green bean casserole. I mean, it's like everything. Oh, it just takes green beans and makes them fatty and crispy and delicious, and it's, oh, love it. Okay. In the acknowledgement sense, big ups is similar to a shout out. When ex- when it expresses praise, a big ups is similar to kudos and props. All right. So I might be guilty of cultural appropriation, for which I am sorry. But, but, but you're going to power on through. Hey, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not what I was going to say at all. I was going to say that I, I at least was using it correctly. But, oh, yeah. No disagreement here. Thank you. Mm. If I'm going to if I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to be guilty of cultural appropriation and in, in, Again, At least you're going to do it right. I want to make sure that I'm using it right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. All right. All right. Good. So you got my joke. It's out of the way. Your joke. I'm going to get him one of these. It's so cute. Like, I, like, honestly, that's just one of those. 
Like you tell you tell that you tell your kids that joke, and they go, "Mom," and you go, "Ha ha ha ha," and but they tell their friends, and yeah, the BP. It's a groaner. It's fine. You're so, these are supposed to be groaners. These are not supposed to be like, you know, I'm going to sell this to to Chris Rock or anything. It's just I don't know. Chris Rock could tell my joke. Oh, Chris that's Rock. not that's not my joke I Chris, Chris Rock ain't buying that joke I'm from actually, you or anybody else I actually else. need to find out where I found that joke because I did get it from a dip, from an online resource and I should give credit where it's due so I should give big ups to all right well <laughs> while she's doing that I'm gonna I, I will, I'll do the introduction uh introductions I am Jim hi chief content officer of trippy feels so official it's so weird <sighs> chief content officer oh my goodness and i am adelaide braddock oh, look at you using last names and everything i'm formal ms braddock i'm fancy like you're that. so fancy i'm so fancy i already you don't know, know. <laughs> that happened all right adelaide braddock i am the ceo uh True. and also co-founder of trippy and, and together we are co Jim's wife and right. together we are team branding. Together we are uh-huh. team branding or Gemini Productions whenever we incorporate that. That will happen. That's happening. For sure. For sure. For sure. All right. Okay. So I can't find it. I will find it you later. Find I will put it. Oh my goodness. It, we'll put it in the link in the bio so that people can see it. Because everybody's going to want to go to that site and. They might. There's they, 120 no, they, they, jokes on that. I, you know, I actually Some have. Some of them a, were questionable, but. I, I have a I have a couple different sites that I looked up trying to come up with last week's joke. So believe it or not. The that last, took more than one. No, the last week's joke was that that's I'm wholly responsible for that. I'm not holding anybody else to account for that. Thank that's goodness. that's I can't, I can't entirely imagine. on me. But. Um, so bad. <laughs> so mean so it was, so, mean. It was it wasn't, so bad it wasn't that bad it wasn't great mm. hey, you know what whatever <laughs> moving moving along moving along uh if perfect yeah. is the enemy of great it was perfect <laughs> so this week this week as we usually do we're going to talk about things that we are eating and or drinking i'm so excited and for mine once again once again in in for me it is drinking um before well i'm so sorry oh. i i do want to jump in with one quick thing here before you do oh. your i know little miss interrupted here i didn't i didn't expect you to like go right into it right away so what okay not? what do you what, what do you well, no, sorry i want to get a little just... i want to get a, a little space really quickly to the fact that we are here in the united states and here in the united states it's opening week for baseball oh yeah which is yeah, the yeah. sport that we watch when it's not hockey season <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> but i but this is that's why i wanted to because this is i'm repping today and i wanted to give i wanted to give an extra congratulations to my guy Oh, uh, Salvi. Mr. Capitan. Senor Official. Capitan. Senor Capitan. Oficialmente, right? Okay. So congratulations, Salvi, for your being named captain of the Royal Squad this year. That's really exciting. Um, so, yeah. Favorite player in baseball. He's a good guy. He I should is. actually, I should, I should, I should have brought out my bobblehead. I'm actually kind of sad I didn't think to oh do Oh, my that. goodness. <laughs> yeah. I've she... got the best Salvador Perez bobblehead. I'm not kidding. I, I'm the I'm the person who like goes to games and like takes the same sign every time, which always says Salvi for president. It's pretty good. And I like it. Honestly, I'd consider voting for the him. flip side. Says, "Hey, Salvi, free hugs." I'm not such a fan of that side. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. He I is kid. adorable. I am not the type. He's no. It's it's not even that kind of. It's not. I don't have that kind of attraction to sports figures. I'm not like, oh my god, he's so hot. Like, no, it's not. Jeez, I do. I know you do, and it's actually really cute. But I like my whole thing is like like favorite hockey player Victor Hedman, favorite baseball player Salvador Perez. Like super easy stuff because first off, these dudes are just first off they're massive, which it, to me it's really fun to watch like very large people do very talented things. Like, like I mean that's kind of that's don't... kind of why they're doing the things that they're doing. It's oh no, that's... oh cat food, cat food, kitty's getting fed. Everybody gets to hear that now. It's a good time. Yeah, she's gobbling that down too. She is excited. Oh my god. 
No, that's fine. Welcome to our inner workings. No, but I mean, like, I love, I love the, the big players who go out and like do these really cool things. Men, women, doesn't matter. Like everyone's amazing. And that's, that's where I'm just like, okay, first off, that's really great. He's a catcher. So he's mm-hmm. already, he's like six, four or some or six, three. Yeah. And he's like hunched down all the time. Like he's one of the bigger dudes in the sport that's, and he's like that, constantly that in that position. That screws your knees like, so bad too. I know I, it has to. And, but he's great at it. And he's, I mean, yeah, it he, just, it just is. And, and yeah. it's kind of like, it's, you watch Victor Hedman, who's like six, 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 seven glides around float the ice. down the ice and just, I mean, but because of his size, he's just got this extra, you know, an extra one or two inch reach on the, on the stick when he's trying to get to the puck ahead of the player he's defending mm-hmm, against or something mm-hmm. like you just get that that sense of grace and aesthetics to what they're doing. And it yep. feels, it feels great to watch. So anyway, so that's kind of, I don't know, there's something about that to me, but these guys in particular are just geniuses at their own game. And I oh, love for it. sure. I love it. Yeah, if you make it to that level, you'd have to be. Not necessarily. I've seen plenty of people at that level who are not what I would call genius at that level. <laughs> no, it's, you know, rebuilding. There's a reason the hall of fame exists. Well, yeah, it's not the hall very good either. Um, I am repping oh, yeah. my fills. Oh, you, oh, not SEPTA. Got it. Well, and SEPTA too. <laughs> I love Por that shirt. No I'm sad dos. I don't have mine. We got that at opening day. Was it opening four day? Years yeah, I guess ago, it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good one. It's uh, average goblin strikes again. I am worried. I like, have to bring it up every time now because Cassie left that comment. Beverage goblin. <laughs> she's like, she's like, did anybody? Is no one going to call out the fact that Addie just drank out of a vat of water? A vat <laughs> like a of water for fifty first minute. <laughs> It's a liter, and that's how I know it's a, it's a beer stein, and I just fill it with water, so I know when I've had two liters of water, and I'm hydrated. Got it helps it. keep me glowy. It helps keep you glowy, yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. We need to help keep this podcast flowing, anyway, though. True story. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> nah, so you're repping the fills. I, I love you. Absolutely um, love that. I'm, I'm, ro- I'm repping the fills. I'm repping SEPTA at the same time. Go uh, Southeast Pennsylvania Transit Authority. Heck yeah. Uh, thanks for getting us around, especially when we've been drinking, especially at the Phil's games. But uh, <laughs> especially yeah. when we're broke. <laughs> and when we're broke, yes. That's the, they are they are yeah, a people cheap support and, SEPTA. Support your local MTA. Support like, any like, yeah, exactly. Support any of your Metro your Transit. local transit authorities. They they help get you around. Hey, and when you're on vacation and everything, look up the local tra- transit authorities and uh, see how you can get around a little more cheaply. Or just, you know, at all. Like it's We're at all, yeah. It's a pretty decent experience. It's not I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say SEPTA's got it all figured out, but we'll we'll get into I think we'll do a transit authority segment uh in the next couple of weeks because I think it's worthwhile to talk about like how different places handle it and I mean Al. You and I have had some experiences, so I think it's worthwhile to Have talk. we? Yeah, I I'm mean Bar- think. Barcelona. I've I've ridden the I've ridden the transit in Beijing. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, all right. Is. Yeah. We're, we'll we'll anyway. have to do a transit episode. Okay. I'm here for it. I'm here yeah. for it. I've only done it. I've only done it in like three or four cities. So let's go. We got this. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. All Sweet. right. So, all so right. That's okay. So now let's get into what we're eating and drinking, which is really just what Who's we're doing hosting today. This? <laughs> Wait, who is hosting this? Is it me or is it you? Yes. <laughs> we're co-hosting. You're not my supervisor. I, I don't know. You're not my supervisor. Wait, who is my supervisor? Oh my God. <laughs> Got to talk to yourself about that. You got to you got to give yourself good talk. Mr. Manning, you are the one who said we need to keep this flowing. Let's go. What are you drinking? <sighs> Fine. What are you drinking? I'm drinking Yards. Yeah. Why? Props to Yards because it is a local beer. It is actually just down the street from us, and I I happen to think it's delicious. They have been around since the mid '90s. Uh, led the Philly beer renaissance craft brewery. Yeah, they were like one of the. They were at the forefront of that. Okay. Back in the mid nineties. When like craft beers really started popping back up again and oh, super cool. Becoming popular and everything. And it's, you know, I'm beer snobbing over here, which I wasn't always, but you know, now I'm I can afford it. Yeah. So <laughs> probably still caught that on. At least mic. I muted myself. Nicely done. No, okay. That's it's all good. It's all good. I'm still trying to figure out my levels. Anyhow, um, yeah, so so the, uh, but yes, Yards, um, drinking their IPA today. Uh, do a lot of, like, English-style beers and, you know, happy happy to promote the local folks. Um, and, yeah, if... Uh, Yards Brawler is a really good... Yards Brawler is delicious. It's like an English-style... Very style. sectionable, it's too. A, yeah, it's an English-style... That's the thing I appreciate about Yards, because, um, again, I don't do 
I don't do beer often, mm -hmm. but when I do, there are certain go-tos that I have. And Yards is a good one for that because they're not particularly hoppy beers unless you're doing the IPAs. Right. Um, but they're not, they're not punch you in the face if you just want to like hang out and have like a few beers mm -hmm. uh, and maybe not drink, I don't know, Budweiser that day or something like. Yeah, you can get the, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of English style beers yeah. and a lot of just, yeah. Really delicious, tasty beers that you can session, and it's very nice. They got a heavy hitter with the Cape May. It's like 8%. Cape May? Yeah. Isn't that theirs? No, I think you're thinking of Cape May Brewing. No, they have one that's called like a Cape May IPA or something like that. I'm, uh, hold on. Oh, my goodness. Cape May or Cape, Cape of May. Good? Is it Cape of Good Hope? Did I miss? Did I, oh, did yeah. I up? Probably Cape of Good Hope. No. No, it I got to find this one. They have. I thought they had one that was like a Cape May something or other, but it was like a, it was like an IPA, lovely beer, absolutely gorgeous, real floral with like just a hint of like, I, I citrus vaguely know what you're talking about. Yeah. But. I, it's Cape something. I had Cape in it. Sorry. It's been, it's been a minute. All oh right. My anyway, my bad. No, oh God. Um, all right. So yeah. So, so that's what I'm drinking. Uh, what you got over there, Ooh. Ms. Braddock. All right. So I love this. This is, this is going to be kind of fun. I am drinking a Cape, Speaking of capes, Cape Marula, Marula Cream Liqueur. So this is the bottle. I found Marula. this. Yeah. So I found this at the liquor store down the street. Um, if you're not familiar here in Pennsylvania, we have weird liquor laws. And so uh, if you want to <laughs> oh buy liquor, God. you have to go to the state run liquor store. Which now that's, is something, that's something actually we ought to talk about too. It's like yeah. drinking on drinking on holiday and oh my God. different laws well, in different they've places. Changed, uh, yes, we will definitely talk about that. But here in Philly, here in Pennsylvania, it's the Fine Wine and Good Spirit store. So you have to go to those if you want to buy liquor and most wines. But now they have um, they do have beer distributors. It used to be when we moved here, you had you could only buy a case of beer at a time. And now they've they've opened it up to where you can buy. Confirmed. You can, you can break them out and you can do like quarter cases and stuff like that. So, or individual Quarter case, also known as a six pack. As it were. That's right. And you can get like individual bottles and stuff like that. Um, but um, I was surprised. I went over to, so they just opened a, a fine wine and good spirit store down the street from us. And I found this on the shelf. And, um, and I found it the same week that we were watching um, a Wild Earth episode which I'll talk about Wild Earth in just a second, but we were watching an episode of Wild Earth um, and the guide was talking about coming or going home. I think she was from South Africa. I'm trying to remember, but she was like going home home mm -hmm. and she got to eat some marula fruits or she had been gone and came back or something like that, right? And so she ha she got she was craving hmm. marula fruits and I have no idea what this was. And she goes, if you haven't had marula, it's hard to explain the taste. It's just something you know. And so she was going on and on about how much she loved it and how much she missed it and how excited she was to have it again. And so uh, I, I went out and when I saw this, I was like, I did not know, here we go, that I could buy this thing. So I did and, um, and I thought I would try it and I love it. It's very nice and- it, it, it is. Is it spicy? Is that the one that's spicy? No, I'm thinking of the Mexican chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liqueur. No, this is not even close. So the way I would describe the flavor is if you've ever had tequila rose, it's no. kind of similar to that. Like anyone, not. anyone who may have had that, like that's, that's what we're talking about here. So it's, you know, the cream liqueurs, they all kind of taste the same, but this one has a little more of like a, um, it's really sweet. And then it has like maybe a little bit of acidity towards the end, just on mm -hmm. the sides of your tongue, you kind of feel it, but it's, um, it almost even also has like kind of a vanilla y cocoa y kind of okay. essence to it. Do you want to try a little bit? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've had it, but I can't remember it offhand, so why not? Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah, that is interesting. It's like, it actually kind of reminds me of a little mango. I can, yeah, I can get that for sure. Oh. How mango has that that fruity floral right. essence to it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so but, but without, like, the overwhelmingly, it's not fruity. I wouldn't define it necessarily as yeah. fruity. It, it's more on the, yeah. it's more on, like, it, it, it uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting, but I like it a lot. It it definitely reminds me of. Um, I always think of tequila rose when I have it, but uh, yeah. So that's that. Um, but but for those of you who are interested in uh, the program that I found this on Wild Earth, uh, oh, Jim such discovered a good this. Channel. Yeah, Jude. Why don't you tell everybody what it is? Uh, I I mean I couldn't 
I can barely do this justice. So <laughs> apologies to uh, Wild Earth for anything I'm missing here. But they basically are doing a <laughs> so it's we discovered it during the pandemic and uh, By we, he needs you. yeah, I discovered it during the pandemic. It was on one of those streaming services that we had at the time. I'd never even heard of it. And I'm like, yeah, hell with it. I'll give this a shot. Mm -hmm. And it's literally the program that I really got into is literally people on safari drives and their photo safaris. So it's yeah, video it's safaris. Safari. Yeah. It's not a hunting safari. Thank goodness. I, there's no way I'd be watching that or, or, or jocking that, but um, it, it's a, yeah, it's a, a, a photo safari where they have naturalists uh, all across um, the Southern portion of Africa mm -hmm. uh, talking about, talking about, um, some of the animals and everything that that they're that are indigenous to the area, mm -hmm. driving all of these game reserves, um, you know, across like South Africa, Namibia. I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, I think I get into Kenya a little bit, Botswana, Tanzania, yeah. Zimbabwe, so you know, yeah. so yeah, and it's really really cool, and you get to learn a lot about um, wildlife from these naturalists and everything, and they just they are so in love with what they're doing. It's great. And I it's know. Such and a, they're from everywhere like they're, yeah, their they're guides from all come over in the world. from they've got them um, they've got americans scots uh brits americans mm -hmm. oh, okay. yeah they had a woman on there who was from the states or maybe uh, canada but i she sounded american i know i'm sure she was american because i remember her talking about okay. it um but, but people obviously from south africa because that's where i believe they're based out of the cool thing about wild yeah, earth too is it's not just it's not just the tv show and the guides do yeah. their thing. They have lodges. So if you wanted to go visit mm -hmm. and see the animals for yourself, and they have everything. Like oh when they God, know where yeah. to go to find these animals. Because the thing is, the, the animals that are out there have been collared and tagged. They're on wildlife reserves. So they're they they know that you know some of these animals. A lot have of them names. have been collared. Right, 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 right. But, but like the the wild dogs, for example, the second most they say this all the time, second most endangered animal in Africa and the entire continent. Uh second only to the Ethiopian wolf, I think. Uh, Ooh, weird. Yeah. And they have um, you know, they know where to go find the dens of these very, very endangered dogs who are adorable, by the way. Oh, my God. I don't think I've seen an animal on there that I wouldn't risk my life to pet if I given know, the opportunity. Right? <laughs> this is one of those, like, like uh, I hate to admit it, but you're right. I'm holy I'm crap. Like, I, I'm serious. I'm like, I'm like, kitty. No, that cat will actually eat, eat your, your head. Oh, yeah. yeah. And not, not even just the big cats, but, like, the little cats. Oh, yeah, sure. Like, the desert cats and stuff that they find. You're like, oh. I want to pet you, but mm -hmm. probably not wise. It's a bad idea. Yeah. So be my friend. <laughs> no, but it really like, they really do have some it's a great, some cute. So yeah. So go to wild TV and check them out. Uh, get to know they've got little blips. It's not. Yeah. It's not the most like robust website, but it's good. Um, you can get to know the programming. They have special programming for kids. They have special programming for not kids. Um, they have, yeah. um, they have special programming for whatever you're looking for to live interactive. You can mm -hmm. go ask questions to the safari guides themselves. I think you have to will, be a subscriber for that, but you yes, do, but it's free to subscribe and you can also sign mm. up. Yeah, it is. Okay. Pretty sure. We ain't free. Yeah, but we don't pay for it. I I haven't paid for it, and I logged in under my own account. Maybe that's why they never why they never answer, answer my questions. questions. It could. Yeah, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the <laughs> questions I'm asking. I I literally the first question I ever asked was, "Have you ever crashed the car?" Oh my god, <laughs> that's such a you question too. I was curious. I mean, he almost hit a massive ditch, and I was like, "Has, has anyone ever?" like crashed one of your vehicles uh but yeah no it's uh it's it's a lot of fun so i would definitely check it out and again great programming for kids mm -hmm. highly highly recommend do bear in mind it is nature and they do make a point of that there are disclaimers it, you may see some disturbing images of animals fornicating um killing oh uh, yeah things, killing <laughs> eating yeah eating things. other animals because that's how Cause nature, that's how nature works. works so yeah exactly but it, but that's what i love about it is it's just it's direct and that's great so mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. anyway. yeah, it's super cool. I do, I'm with you. I, yeah. I love it. Turn it on just about every Saturday morning. Phenomenal. Um, all, right. all right. So shall we? Shall we get to the? Shall we transition? Shall we transition? 
let curious, us I'm to curious transition. What transition sound I know. Is. I'm. I, you spent that, way too much time on this I for this to not work. Turning <gasps> that down. Let's try that again. Now we're going to go to the news. In the news. That's way better. Can you do it one more time? Because I'm on a swivel chair. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Such a doof. That was so fun. I love it. <laughs> I love it. My doofy wife, y'all. As it is. All right. Who's got the first story? Me or uh, you? you? I do. I do. I do. You do? I okay. do. I do. I do. Right. Okay. Um, Nepal has banned solo trekkers. Wait, was this me? Do I want to do? No, yeah, I'll do, I'll do this one. That's fine. I didn't. You didn't. You didn't read. You didn't do the homework. Mm-hmm. Do you want to do it? Because you did. Go ahead. Did you do the homework on the other one? Too? Oh, yeah, you actually did do the homework. Yeah, on the I other did. One That's too. why I was yeah, like, okay. do I, yeah, you do this one. Fine. Nepal bans solo trekkers throughout the country. CNN. Um. Yeah, so thanks to the cost of search and rescue missions, uh, the country has decided to ban solo trekkers entirely. So if you're going to Nepal uh, and you want to do any trekking, you're actually going to have to hire a government licensed guide or join a group. Uh, it's actually, it follows a ban, a five-year-old ban on solo climbers for Mount Everest. Which I didn't even know was a thing, that you can solo climb Mount Everest, people. Not anymore is wrong with you random tourists generally do not have enough experience and not to die on the wild this is my favorite thing like yeah randos randos traipsing around the country and it's like look at this and then die and it's like yeah all right fine I feel like this could be said for a number of countries you can say that included. Can say, <laughs> i mean yeah there are some parks around here where it's like if you ain't careful yeah. you don't die mm. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, but the, the, so they don't have the experience not to, you know, go trek and die. And, uh, the number of, of trekkers has, has climbed dramatically in recent years and, and it's just, oh, that's terrible. That was not, no, that was entirely unintended he meant or was that. it? Uh, yeah. So yes, do bear this in mind. Um, traveling in cities is not affected. So, though. You, can so you can solo actually trek through Kathmandu. Kathmandu. <laughs> sure. And literally any other city in Nepal of which I can name zero. I'm really terrible about this. This is, this is a big ge geography blind spot. Name another city in Hold on. Nepal. Hold on. Hold on. Oh yeah. Okay. You're Googling it. I see you. <laughs> I see, ladies and gentlemen, you may not be able to see this on camera, but she's, Pokhara. I'll take your word. I, I mean, wait, I'm looking Lollipur it up now. is Nepal? I didn't. Lollipur? Know. Yeah, I thought that was India for some reason. Huh. Uh, okay. Interesting. I did not know that. I just learned something. I'm here for that. Today okay. you learned. Today I learned. Lollipur hey, look at that. Look, we're, we're learning, we're growing, we're doing. Love it. Great. Yeah. Lots by of the way, by the way, speaking of ge geographic blind spots, for all of you who feel like you have geographic blind spots, like all the places that maybe we've mentioned so far are are, are creating maybe kind of holes in your brain, um, check out Worldle <laughs> when you get a chance. Um, it's not a game for we've everybody. I get it. Not, you know, people are kind of like <laughs> I don't know, but um, no, we haven't. We, have we already repped it? We said something about we'll, it. We'll get them to sponsor us someday, I'm sure. But they're, they're, it's a fun, fun game. Uh, the creator of this did a really great job, in my opinion, continues to roll out really good features on it. But I've learned so much about geography uh, that I just did not, like capitals, flags, populations, Oh, it's incredible. It's a really great, great game. So, like, anyway. Neighbors. I love the neighbors part the best. That's my favorite. Yeah. I, well, I, honestly, if you're the, if you created Worldle, uh, reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Yeah. I want to know what the inspiration was and yeah. everything. Let's get and, you interviewed. Um, let's, let's chat. Yeah, we'll just, find, just we'll don't ask it. me about any of the island countries that are out there because, damn it, I'm bad at those. Yeah, you are. It's terrible at those. I'm scary good at those. You are. Yeah. It's strange. I know. I'm an island mouse. <sighs> Can't help it. All right. Yeah. So, so. anyway, so anyone planning tra travel to Nepal? Yeah, no. For, so for, yeah, uh, just remember, you know, like 
the world's a dangerous place. This is this is something that I think it was really my take. No, uh, no, that's fair. Go ahead. You can keep saying. What you're like saying. I, I, I say, the world is a dangerous place, and it's like no, no, no. But I'm still encur- trying to encourage people to to get out there and, and 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 you know actually do the travel bit themselves. But it's like you know just be aware of of the things that are out there. Like you know you know what it calls to mind for me is uh, the Grand Canyon, which is a, a astonishingly beautiful space. Uh, we're actually going to talk about that in a future episode as well. But it's a it's one of those places where it's like you can't you can't like put railing up everywhere you can't you know protect everybody from the what, what were the was it elk no it was um There's the elk animals there. the elk okay yeah like you'll find them roaming around and everything it's like you yeah. they can't protect you from all the nobody can protect you from all these things <laughs> you can't i think if it, i may, it, can it, i rephrase what you said the world is not a dangerous place the world has dangers in it, of which you should be aware. I th- that, mm, I'm going to challenge you on that one. I think the world is a dangerous place, and staying alive is a lot trickier than people really <laughs> give it credit for. Hey, kudos to you. Are you alive? That's right. If you're listening to this, congratulations. you have not died today. Congratulations. Big ups. <sighs> Anywho. I'm fine. Research the places that you're going. Understand what the rules and laws are going to look for understand what's out there that might actually unalive you come to us come to us come to trippy and take a look at the resources that we provide and see what we have to say about places in the world that uh, you want to go to because you know here's the flip side on that is yes okay dangers exist the world is a dangerous place however you want to interpret it the fact of the matter is it's also not as dangerous as people make it out to be at times and and i think the sensationalized Uh, approach to getting out into the world can cause a lot of friction mentally for experiencing the world and 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 living in this in this in this beautiful space that we're in right people tend to get really scared of other people and things that other people could do to them more so than they get scared of nature and and i think that's maybe the bigger the bigger issue is like we're all human we all understand who we are and why we're here and what we're doing and our motivations, but, but that rattlesnake over there like, oh, yeah. no, no, no. That's, is doing what it's doing. It's telling you to move away. Yeah. Right. Like, that's, that's all I'm after. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that like, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that like shit's out there to get you. Right. Not at all. Not, not like even people really. Yeah. Like the vast majority of them are not out there to get you. They don't, they don't care. They want you to go on living your life and, and, or even, you know, touristing their places because they, they Mm -hmm. love having guests there and Mm -hmm. everything and are very proud of it. But, but there's, there's stuff out there that it's like, if you're, if you're not paying attention, well, if you're not watching the signs, like, you know, you'll, you'll slip on that rock and boom into the canyon you go. And so interesting you say that because that literally happened to someone I knew. Like, they slipped and not in the green Canyon. Let me rephrase. Um, but yes, there was, there was someone I knew when I was living overseas mm-hmm. who was coming home, um, late from a party and had been drinking and slipped and fell down a bit of a ravine and died. And they didn't recover him for a while. Cause they didn't know where he was. They didn't, nobody knew what had happened to him and they had to retrace, try to retrace his steps and find him. And it was exceedingly sad and tragic. And, and it affects me to this day. Like I think about that. I think about that family. I think about the child he left Mm -hmm. behind. I think about his wife. Like it was very hard. And I didn't, I didn't know him very, very well, but I, I had hung out with him and met him and knew the family and, and we were friends, I would say. And, you know, just even at that level of knowing someone, you just, you don't want that to be, (laughs) <laughs> it's Philly, babe. Uh, you, you you don't ever want to know that that's happened to anybody, whether you know them or not. Sure, is what I want to say. So H- I mean, I, I will just I will just attest that yes, dangers exist. Being cognizant of your surroundings is imperative, especially when it comes to nature and 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 unfamiliar environments. Go out, explore the world, be mindful of it. There you go. I like it. How's that? That that good? All right. Yeah. Have an have an adventure, but please have an adventure. <laughs> Just uh, come back. Just Please come back to tell us about take it. Take care mm-hmm. as you're adventuring. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Bottom line. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, so you got the next one then. Uh, yeah. It's kind of sorta. I mean, you you can go ahead if you want. 
I don't know. I got some things to contribute, but I don't have to do the whole thing. Because I got the, I got the topic for today. So, but then we're gonna go back and forth on it anyway. So that's, that's true fine. too. That's true too. All right. New York urges residents to get vaccinated against polio before travel to Israel. And this is from the Times of Israel. Uh, saying this. So the state of New York has recommended its citizens get vaxxed up against polio before heading to Israel because of an outbreak in Safed. The U.S. CDC is also noting that folks should get their immunizations re-upped if they're going to any country where cases have been reported, and we have a short list of what those countries are. Believe it or not, Canada, U.K., Ukraine, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, which I hate to say it, are pretty much always on the list when it comes to polio. Uh, Indonesia, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and then there's a full list available at uh, the cdc.gov page, which we will note in the mm -hmm. section below. So um, the the article that we got this from uh, does note that vaccine skepticism has enabled the polio to pop up occasionally. Um, there's some additional resources. That I like we how have you call available. it the polio, by the way. The polio. Um, we have some additional resources available uh, from the United Nations Foundation and the Bulletin for uh, the Atomic Scientists. Really, the only reason um, I, I pulled those up was because I wanted a better understanding of why vaccine why, skepticism yeah. was as strong as it was. Um, I will say Pakistan and Afghanistan, it sounds like, are doing more um, to encourage vaccination throughout the countries, with, with limited exception pretty much in like North and South Waziristan up in, in um, on the, on the border, interestingly enough of Afghanistan, but yeah. Yeah. So. I, like I, I, when, when we were discussing some of the other research you'd found on the whole thing, I found it interesting, mm -hmm. like what some of the justifications behind that <laughs> were like, what was the United States role in all of this? Oh, for brother. example. All right. It's, we'll tiptoe right up that line. And then, I mean, it is what it is. The, the, the fact of the matter is during the search for Osama bin Laden, the CIA uh, had some people pose as vaccination reps who went into Pakistan. And, and they actually did the vac vaccinating, right? Purportedly, yeah. But yeah. I mean, they did it under the guise of being vaccinators and they used that, they used that opportunity to get close to people who might know where bin Laden was, which is exactly what happened and how they got his whereabouts mm. and and uh, yeah, it managed to set back vaccine efforts probably by decades by some assessments. So you know you're looking at you're looking at countries that are already understandably wary of the United States and its motivations in the area, and uh, you do something like that, and suddenly, you know, all all bets are off. So yeah, I, I I'm certainly not thrilled that that was the, I mean, I, I have plenty of political opinions around, you know, things that the United States has done. I, I full disclosure. I, I, I've studied a lot around foreign international relations and foreign relations and all, international security and all this fun stuff. Throughout There's my, some draw, draw dropping stuff out there. It's a little rough people, but you know, it's, it's, it'll challenge your patriotism at times. And that's, that's fine. It should be challenged. You should think good, long and hard about what you support in life, you know, Fair. Royals included sometimes, right? Like, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love yeah. me some Royals. Speaking of needing to consider I'm not actually a big George Brett fan, believe it or not. It happens. But anyway. That's even. Uh, I know. It's no. a weird one. Yeah, it's a that's weird a very one. weird one. Well, he bought my favorite restaurant and turned it into a freaking clothing store. So I'm not super thrilled about that. I thought he changed it into a sports bar or something. One part of it. And then the other part became like a, a merch store for like chefs and Royals gear. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. George. Don't at me, bro. Anyway, you can at me. Yeah, no. So, but I, that, but that was that was really fascinating. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I don't either. My drink. Those tiny, <laughs> those tiny little hands, like you, you basically tiny need fist of fury. I have tiny I am a very powerless enemy. Let me tell you. <laughs> you have made a very powerless enemy. Yeah. Thank you for not doing the trope. No. Good um, night. Um. No, I wasn't. I wasn't going to try and. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it was up who I was definitely not going to try and do that. Yeah. That voice. Anyway, uh, anyway. Yeah. So no, but it's it's it was a really fascinating thing that like um, how much you know vaccine skepticism plays into it as well as skepticism of those giving the vaccine. So it's not simply people who are like, right. You know, oh, vaccines will cause autism, which frankly is just untrue. It's, I, I'm not even. I mean, I'm, here, not, I'm not even making this a political standpoint. I love the standpoint. argument. I love the argument it's, around that, though. It's like even if it were true, you would rather your child die of some horrifying right. disease than be autistic. Like, come on now, really? The is actual, that is that what you're saying? That's that's no, that is that's exactly that's not what cool. you're saying. I know. I mean, no, I know, but I'm. I get. Yeah, so. it's just it, it. Yeah. My bad. It's like, don't do that. Don't do that, folks. 
It's it's having a having your child die is a lot worse. So, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, but it's also still not true. And the but the but it was not just the vaccine. You know, the the skepticism over the vaccine itself, but the skepticism over those administering the vaccine was another really interesting aspect that I had never considered. And it, it's like, oh, why would that be? And then you know, you hear about the CIA bin Laden and now you get connection, it. and it's like, oh. Well, and I think that that I think that just stoked the existing flames. I it did it it, it didn't start Fair. the fire, right? Fair. But we didn't start the fire. We get the reference. But <laughs> 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 I, was, I, was, I was making that point. Uh, but no, but the idea that um, you know the work that these people do uh, to go and vaccinate against this frankly horrifying disease. Um, puts their lives in danger is just it's astounding to me because mm -hmm. you, know, you think about polio. Polio is extremely transmissible. I mean, it is very easy to pass from one person yeah, to another, it, and it like doesn't even even get into the water supply. I think so. Yeah, I I don't I won't say that I know. Don't quote me on that. that. Don't quote me on that. Like, um, but the point is, you know, it's 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 easily transmissible between people and in the environment, and. It's for most of the people who get it, they experience quite severe side effects. I mean, you're in in some instances it will kill, but it you know paralysis like that's mm -hmm. geez Louise. And it, and part of it is the misconception around some of the symptoms that come from the disease. So there there's a misconception that the paralysis is reversible. It is not. It is not curable. Once you're paralyzed from polio, that's it. Like you're done yeah. in that, in that regard. But the, the ability to catch it does not come from getting the vaccine itself. It comes from not being vaccinated against the vaccine right. when it exists in the environment. Right. So uh, the thing that I was reading was um, that's why I had the uh, bulletin of atomic scientists in there was, they were talking about the science behind when it's administered via orally. orally. Um, it goes into the gut where the, where the, um, where it lives. And then it, it's a, it's a weakened version of the virus. And so you ingest the virus, the virus procreates inside your body and causes a minor reaction to it. It does not cause the disease. It helps build your mm -hmm. immune system against the disease. So it's sending the message around what's happening and it does have to be administered multiple times, which is another misconception. People think that you only get it the once and you're done. That's with the vaccine, not with the, not with the oral drops. So the oral drops will do that. But the problem is the vaccine will shed in feces. So when people poop, it, sheds and gets into maybe the water stream or other things and people who yeah. are not vaccinated then become susceptible to picking up the weakened form of the uh immunization they may not even get sick but then that becomes that, that then, becomes a breeding right. ground for it to get stronger and that just that just culminates in the actual outbreak so then polio it, becomes the problem in that space and i did confirm uh yeah ingestion by food or water contaminated by human feces can cause infection Got it. Got it. So yeah, that's uh, which that's... you don't think about as being a problem here in the states necessarily, or at least not not mm. all of us do. I know that that not all of us are privileged, but um, to have functioning sewage everywhere around the world, um, or everywhere everywhere around the states, but especially in the world. But the thing to consider there is there are places where sometimes human feces is used to fertilize crops. Mm -hmm. You know, you do get cholera outbreaks and things like that in some of those places, but polio can can thrive there if you're not yeah. careful. So. You know, it just, it happens. You just got to be cautious of where you're at, what's happening, what you're exposed to. If it gets in the air, if it gets in the, and it gets in the air by getting into the dust, like mm. the water mixes with the dust and then the dust gets kicked up and yeah. Right. So you're inhaling it. So, yeah, right. So there's all kinds of, again, the world has dangers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a dangerous place. It has dangers. <laughs> so anyway. All right. Good things to know yeah, about definitely. getting vac vaccinated against polio, which at one point we said was eradicated, but here we are. Alas, it is it is returned. It is ongoing endemically in Pakistan and Afghanistan and but is working its way out. There are lots of I, I will give I will give a shout out to all of the wonderful men and women who go out there and yes. risk their lives, yes. frankly, to administer this vaccine against this horrifying disease and probably don't make a whole lot of money doing it. I mean, I'm sure they don't do it for the, no, I, that's probably one of those where it's like, you, that is a labor of love folks. And it's a labor of love that unfortunately can be very dangerous yeah. as well. So 
Yeah. We'll have, um, I have, a, I have a friend who used to work at the Gates Foundation. We may have him on the show and he can talk oh, about the Oh, that'd be so cool. That, yeah, he can talk about the, um, the vaccine mm -hmm. um, distributors that he, that he worked with. He said some of them had to come to this talks that he was giving with like shields over their faces because they were, um, they were wanted in their yeah. own countries or in countries where they were administering these vaccinations. So wild. So. Just, just wild. Yeah. Yeah. Truly, truly wild. <laughs> Gonna put a counter up for that. Okay. <laughs> well, now that we've now that we've chatted for nigh on fifty minutes, actually just crossing fifty minutes. All right. Well, crossing fifty minutes since we started recording. So we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. this. Probably got about five minutes to trim before. Anyhow, um, <laughs> uh, so why don't we get to today's topic then? I don't about get a seg. What? I don't get a seg. <laughs> Thank you. On to today's topic. <laughs> today's topic. So today's topic, I, I'm going to come back to the wild earth topic. And this is why. I, I like it. Drawing it back so, around. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, animals are awesome and we love them and we want to see them happy and thriving because, mm -hmm. you know, they're part of our planet too. And so, yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I got I got an interesting story from uh, the Washington Post in my uh, inbox the other day called Animal Rides Are Cruel advocates say so why are we still doing them which i thought that's an interesting topic because it plays into a lot of i mean immediately you start thinking about like okay we all know animal cruelty is wrong or at least we should yeah right okay so we're all on the same page about this animal cruelty not okay no no not that's easy out. that's easy done now there are some wishy-washy areas around there where you're talking about people whose maybe livelihood depends on this, so it becomes more of like an economic issue. And then the sensation that some mm -hmm. of this is maybe cultural um, mm -hmm. because of involvement of animals in certain rites of passage or certain historical, historically significant uh, pieces throughout you know other countries' histories yeah. and so on. So anyway... The idea of um, doing an animal ride somewhere, you know, maybe you see other people doing it or you think like, yeah, I'm going to Giza. I might as well be, get an Insta picture of me on a camel. Mm -hmm. Like, why wouldn't you? It's a beast of burden. Why not do this thing? I'm in India. Why not ride an right. elephant? That sounds amazing. It's what they do over there, right? Isn't right. Yeah. Not always yeah. the truth. Not mm -hmm. always the case. Mm -hmm. um, so things to bear in mind from this article. I thought this was a great, great piece. So again, we'll have the link. Um, below if you're able to access it. I think it might behind, be behind a paywall, which is another reason I wanted to talk about it here was because it, it's worthwhile. Um, but uh, but yeah, the first thing it notes really is that the animal rides are falling out of popularity. This is one of those things where like people go to other countries and they're sort of like, eh, I don't feel really great about this. Like these animals look maybe a little mistreated or this doesn't look like it's on the up and up mm. or I can't verify how they're being treated when I'm not here, which is another point that they make. Mm -hmm. um, but something I did not know or even consider elephants for as large as they are, are not be suburban. They were never, yeah. they never evolved to carry things on their backs, which is part of the reason why it's so bad for them to do elephant rides because people uh, just even the weight of a of an average size human being can damage their spine, mm -hmm. which I thought was fascinating. It, it really is too, and that's I I think one of my takeaways, and I'll, I'll just briefly is, is um, about reframing what what cruelty ends up looking like, and yeah. because you think some of these animals are are oh yeah they can totally handle whatever For is sure. going on here, yeah. it's not not always the case like in fact in, in many cases it's not the case at all right it, yeah right 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 it's, it's interesting well and so and then they go on to talk about like um you know looking around at what's happening potentially mm. when you're not there yeah to see it in action like are these animals malnourished are right. they being kept in solitary conditions are they being confined yep. right um even in the moment you you might not see they were saying like some of the mahouts have like bull hooks like sharp bull hooks like hidden under their cloaks mm -hmm. that they use to like whip the animals uh when people aren't looking <clears throat> excuse me so why you know why bring all this up? We've already been so bright and sunshiny today. <laughs> it's, why talk about something is, so dark? We should have called this the cheery episode. <laughs> no, right? Starburst tastes the rainbow. No, Skittles. What? I was. Oh. It's the Skittles episode. Um, <clears throat> but um, but yeah. Anyway, so um, 
I'm going to, I'm actually going to skip like a lot of the other, for that reason, like a lot of the other stuff that they talked about here, but this was, this was what I thought was cool. Um, a lot of areas are, are looking to reframe how they engage with, with, Mm -hmm. with their beasts of burden, with their wild animals that they put into these positions. And one thing that I loved was, um, the, so if you go to like Petra is the big new new everyone's really excited about petra right now in jordan okay. um if you've ever seen raiders of the lost the ark new, that new. scene uh the at new. the end when you see the the building built into the the, ca- the canyon at the bottom that's actually petra that place actually exists and if you haven't been you need to go check it out it, is oh, it looks incredible I it's, a, it's been, absolutely on my bucket list oh my goodness like whole oh. yeah but to get into the gorge is there's like a mile walk between where you come in and then where you go to get to. That's actually the treasury of Petra. So um, that building. Um, yeah. The, the tre- oh. Yeah. Uh, historically, that's what that building was used for. It's not what it was going on in Indiana Jones. No. No, that was not what was going on in Indiana Jones. <laughs> okay. As long as we're clear. Yes. No, um, very different use of that building in that movie. True. Okay. Uh, but no, it, historically it was the treasury. And so anyway, um, that is where a lot of people will take donkeys and camels into, uh, but that's like a mile walk and it's hot, it's arid. It's, you know, even though these right. are these are desert animals, um, and they don't necessarily need to be, you know, if you had to walk a mile multiple you, times a day to These ain't cars. You, you, yeah, right. you ain't, like you, right. you right. pack stuff on them and, they still got legs that they have to carry these things exactly, on. Exactly. Exactly. So, how do you get to this beautiful UNESCO heritage site? <laughs> um, now they have electric golf carts. That's super cool. I love I it. Love and, that. and here's what I loved about it was um, they don't just they haven't just replaced the donkey carts with electric golf carts. They have the donkey um, trainers. Mm-hmm. Driving the driving golf carts, the, the golf carts. <laughs> so, and, so yeah. they're not out of a job. Like they're they're still doing the thing. Some they're systems still... to consider here too. It's know, just you know, it's I like know. stopping the animal cruelty is important, and Huge. it's like how do you do that without you know human cruelty? Basically, how do you do that with well, while while still taking care of the people who make money off of this sort of thing? So that was really really interesting. Yeah, one of, Peace. one of the things, since you said that, one of the things that I really liked about this article was um, they repeatedly referenced an interview with um, a representative from PETA. Mm. And and this, this person's, um, and, and I'll just qualify <laughs> something here. My, my take on PETA, and this is me, this is, I don't expect anyone else to Purely have this. Purely personal, this these d- reviews do not necessarily reflect that of Trippy. <laughs> as it were. <laughs> um, no, I, my, my sensation around PETA is it is, it is animals before people. And I get why that's important. I get why that, why it almost has to be the case that, that we take that point of view because we are, we have done a lot of things to this planet. And at some point mm-hmm. we need to stop putting ourselves first. I get that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't always agree that the tactics are as effective. Maybe you wind up in the news for a little bit, but I always see them as being like, not always, but I often see these tactics as being a bit immature and not necessarily garnering the the response. that Because all people wind up doing is talking about PETA and how crazy they are as opposed to the cause that they're fighting for. Right. And I have seen instances where they have managed to affect change. Um, I think about, oh, who was it? Um, the model. Oh, um, uh, uh, Giselle Bunchen mm-hmm. um, was protested by PETA at one of her... Um, one of her catwalks, like one of her fashion shows, because she had agreed to, she had signed on for a contract for a furrier. Um, and the, and so it actually sparked her to like, get to know what was happening and who she had signed up with. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, this is not okay. Like this treatment is not okay. And it's not okay. Fur is not, fur is murder. And I'm sorry that I agree with that. Um, but don't be sorry. That's, no, I'm not. I'm not it's, actually sorry. It, it, it's hard, it's <laughs> pretty was, hard to, to, to was, defend the fur. That was a redheaded industry, apology. So. <laughs> or Gemini apology. I'm not sure which. But no, but like, yeah, people people who um, who have been affected by this. And like, you got Giselle Bunchen to become an animal rights activist. Heck yeah, I'm here for that. That's great. Mm-hmm. At the same time, like, okay, there's some measures that could be a little more measured i think the message can get lost if you're if you're doing it incorrectly and it's instead the the message becomes about what you as an organization are as opposed to what you stand for which is where you really need to Mm -hmm. i would imagine be with these organizations Mm -hmm. but 
yeah, it's uh, point well taken. And the article to your to your point um, makes mention of PETA helping to lead some of these initiatives mm-hmm. in a very uh, humane sort of manner, mm-hmm. but you know, one where it's like we need to talk about these animals and not you know make yeah. sure they're getting treated well too. It's not you know they're still living breathing creatures that get to walk the earth with us and i mean frankly we're privileged to have all the animal right you know our our, our animal friends and and, you know they all have a really important role to play right i I mean wild earth once again bringing it back full circle it's it's their ability and it's one of those things where it's like if you monetize it right if you're talking about something when it's uh, where it's uh, an animal video safari, for example, right. and you're you're looking but you're not disturbing and you're not going up and actually trying to cuddle one of the lions because uh, that's not just a bad idea for you; it's a bad idea for the lion as well. Right. That sort of tourism is you know is something that people are trying to promote and working very hard at, and something that can be very beneficial mm-hmm. when it helps. The communities that that are they're involved, you know, that are involved in these 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 things, as well as uh, the animals themselves. Like you, you watch Wild Earth. Maybe you go on a, a Wild Earth safari, and it's mm-hmm. like it makes you want to uh, then help preserve that, mm-hmm. and it makes you want to help conserve the natural resources and everything required for. Uh, for, <laughs> I, I, yes, I see we have a question in the audience. <laughs> Wasn't that the basis for the national parks being created? Uh, yes, in in a, in its own sort of way was um, they wanted to. Well, <laughs> that actually was kind of a, a, a nationalist jingoist sort of thing almost. But it was a it was a, the 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 United States government didn't want. Uh, didn't want antiquities being removed to foreign countries and uh mm. which is at least part at least this is mesa verde and some of the parks in the, the southwest where you had um a, a lot of native americans uh living mm-hmm. but um yeah some of these cultural sites were getting raided essentially and the united states is like you can't do that and they set up laws to protect our stuff and it's like you know you know right cut to cut to 90 years later and it's like who's our in this right. and right. native americans have a, a a very very strong uh claim to <laughs> it's their stuff folks but anyway I, I, there's but, no but, claim there's, i mean and I, don't, and I don't mean to and i'm sorry i don't mean to gloss over but, what is what is an, an excruciatingly important topic but one that we will actually get into yes. Um, when we talk about the Four Corners trip oh that goodness. we did, which is going, which we're we're going to plug later uh, at, at the end of the show, but that is you're absolutely. But that was the whole thing was um, you had made mention to me a while back of like that was also a way of, you know, or like a residual side effect of that was people who saw these places would then mm-hmm. want to protect them would would be connected to it, and let me tell you. It works. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it works. Like, don't go to the Grand Canyon if you don't want to like spend some money on the Grand Canyon because oh you want that. Or don't go to Mesa Verde if you don't want to spend some money on some really awesome yeah. locations. I mean, this this space is magical up there. It's, it's so incredible. Beautiful. I can't imagine. I can't imagine anyone wanting to just throw that by the wayside like it's just spectacular it, it's kind of it's the point of tourism and it's like there's a lot to there there's go. really a lot to um a lot to unpack it's a really huge expansive subject and yeah. it, and it can be you know it can be impactful it's it, tourism is is impactful yeah uh, and you can either do it positively or you can do it negatively right. and yeah, that's what we're here to do is like promote that, promote the doing the positive yeah. aspects of it. You have to get to know something in order to want to save it. Great. It's kind of a human trait. You Great. have to get to know the thing in order to say, I want to make sure that this is around for yeah. more people to see and more people to want to save. And yeah. tourism is a is a great way to do that if it's done right. Yeah. Well said. Thanks. Very well said. I'm I'm Thanks. here for all. I feel of like that. I've been I feel like I've been foot and mouth for so many. <laughs> you are too funny. Episodes. No, that was but, great. Uh, I I thought you know what that's you're spot on, man. And that's the whole point is um so the reason why the reason why I wanted to talk about this was because again the 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 necessity for us to protect 
um, to protect one another, to protect our environment, to, to protect the pieces of that environment, which are the animals as well. And knowing, um, what role they, they really need to play. I mean, these are, these are mm -hmm. sentient beings. These are, you know, creatures that live lives and have roles to play in this. Um, and there's thankfully organizations that measure how countries perceive all of right. these things. So, uh, if you go to, um, the world animal protection index, which was listed in the, in the article. So this is one thing I really liked about the article as well was that, um, Aside from the presentation of PETA as being a measured organization that mm. can have a humanistic approach, um, was that it talks, it gives solutions. It talks about where can you go to know um, how yeah. your country or other countries are ranked. Funny enough, the 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 World Animal Protection Index has a ranking system of A to G. So G mm. is the worst, obviously. Um, and the USA and Canada ranked D, both of us. And and you can mm. do a comparative, so you can select up to four countries, and you can you can compare them against uh, you know different like more finite elements of like what are they what are they looking at like what are the laws protecting mm -hmm. animals what, you know if any what are the what are the perceptions of of sentience and and how they're being treated it's and perceptions of sentience it's fascinating it's very very cool so I would I would definitely recommend checking that out we'll have the link in 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 the bio. for sure. Uh, or in the content thread down below. Um, but then the other thing I liked was the Global Federation of Wildlife Sanctuaries. So how do you know that the sanctuary that you want to go to is legit and not mm, just like trying yeah. to, um, way before Carol Baskin made the rounds yes. in, in her 15 minutes of fame and then some, uh, Jim and I actually knew about Big Cat Sanctuary. Yeah. And I had I had wanted to go there because we were down in Tampa and I was mm -hmm. like, dude, this place looks amazing. And I wanted to go there and now I'm like a little skeptical. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful of that stuff. Exactly. But Homosassa Springs, on the other hand, has right. a wildlife preservation um, mandate. And so they have they have animals there that are in different stages of health and yeah. and potential for release and what have you, they have a manatee sanctuary. Um, the um, uh, one thing that I do want to talk about on the four corners as well is the uh, aviary that we visited on the, uh, on the reservation. Yeah. We went to um, Zuni Pueblo. Um, the there are some people there who are doing some wonderful work, right, to rehabilitate, to rehabilitate or house even exactly golden uh, golden, golden eagles, eagles, bald eagles, mm -hmm. um, other birds of prey. Those were the only two uh, brands of bird that they had while we were there, but um, they were they were just amazing. Like like the work that they do there is just insanely cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I all these kinds of places are absolutely so you can look at the global federation of wildlife sanctuaries um anyone who has that accreditation will prominently display it on their website because it is a point of pride or at least it should be so if they're not right. displaying it you have to imagine that they probably aren't actually accredited or don't care that they're accredited which do some cross-referencing anyway just to be eh. sure i don't it's, even think you have to go that far are... just see if it's on the website okay. they'll put it up there if it right, is. Fine. yeah don't cross-reference see if i yeah. care <laughs> It's all good. It's, I'm, he I'm, said, "See if I care." <laughs> don't be informed. That's don't. that's what are we here for? Uh, who you cares? do you, boo. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. You do you. Yeah. No. It's uh. Yeah. I I I really like that that piece, and it was um a really interesting, uh, a little bit a little bit eye opening, and you know, for me, who's just dirt worshiping tree hugging hippie piece of crap, I I'm just all, I'm like all you over that sort of. Man. Oh my god. Ugh. It's the worst. I'm I'm terrible. I was born three decades too late. Fucking stereotype. I would but, I would argue you were born just right. Heh. You got you got right into the nineties, man. You were fine. You were ready to go with your oh, on with your burks on your feet and your Soundgarden F T W. No. What? Oh, Soundgarden. I I what did I registered Sublime, and I was Killing like, there's over no here, way you were a Sublime fan. Uh, I got some good songs. Yeah, all right. Anyway, so yeah, so that's the. Uh, Right. So that's that. So yeah. So questions about um, places to go, what to check out. Um, you know, generally speaking, you know, just don't ride animals. <laughs> Leave animals don't, alone. Yeah. That's and the lesson if, here, folks. If they look like they're being mistreated, you might be on to something there too. Trust your which gut. Is, I yeah, always come back to this. Is, Trust your gut. If it looks wrong, it's probably right. Shady. And you know, you may not want to give your money there. And it, it, it the. Good point. Keep it. Yeah, go, go. I, so the, the suggestion from this article, speaking of, was why don't you get food and water for 
Yep. These animals, like you know, figure out what they need. And would, their handlers. And their handlers. Take, and their handlers. Don't, don't give them forget, money directly. Just don't give forget them, the people. Yeah, give them. Give people them are animals money. too. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so yeah, just you know, it's, yeah. T- our t- Peter, take care. Our, take care of our resources. Take care of our. Take care of people. Yep. Take care of animals. Take care. Of, take care of this earth. It's taking care of you, y'all. Seriously, not to get all hippy dippy, woo woo on you or anything like that. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna power right on through. I love it. I'm and then, here for uh, it. Yeah. I love it. Then in, in one of these upcoming episodes, I guess you should maybe tease this piece, huh? Let's About do it. Let's do a little let's do a little transition here. Tease. I'm getting better. Yeah. I didn't turn it down this time, but that's because I didn't have to fade out. <laughs> hey, in fairness, I was trying to fade out the 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 song that's and fun. trying to be like really cool about it. Now now I'm feeling defensive. Um I don't know, I'm not. It's it's all good. Okay. Having a weird day, y'all. Um, it is. It, it has been. It's a weird been day. kind we, of a weird day. We had to skip last week because I had food poisoning, mm. and then this week we're trying to make up for lost time, sort of, sort of speak. So yeah. it's, it's been it's been a good one. But no, Feel we've f- had we've had some really good conversations in the interim, and I think we're going to get some really awesome guests on here pretty for soon. for sure. So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got I got to start lining folks got up. Little, but um, got my excited mom shoulders going on. But yeah, <laughs> it's uh, so. It, it, the yeah so what are we we're, we're teasing the four corners so, we're going to talk about that in uh some upcoming episodes exactly. here the the planning and planning and deciding and 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 actual traveling um probably span a couple episodes anyway Easily. to talk about Easily. talk about the different destinations we went to but um yeah help you figure out where you might want to go and uh, how you might get there. And if you're and unfamiliar with what the Four Corners is, this is this this is the part of the United States where Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado can join in a four corner. That's right. Little space, and there is actually, if you've seen Breaking Bad, you know this place exists. There is four because there's the scene where Skylar goes and tries to decide where she wants to run away to. I finds out what, what, what forgot what, all about that episode. Yeah. I thought about that when we went out there and, and it is actually that windy out there, but <laughs> Holy God, I tell you what No, but it's like, it, it's a super cool space. And I mean, you know, the four corner States, Utah, Colorado, New, New Mexico, Mexico and Arizona. Oh, so many things like, to talk about. Uh, I, if you're from the East coast, especially, I mean, maybe if you're from out West, it's like, eh. But if you're from the East Coast, I don't think holy, it is. I think people no, out West are I'm like, sure this place not. is amazing. Yeah, there's yeah, a reason no, we live it's, here. It's incredible. <laughs> so it, it's it's. I'm talking about you know maybe California. I don't know. I, I'm I'm making huge assumptions here. I think so. I think Nevadans have a have a. Nevadans are like, what about us? Um, no, I think they have a place to to argue about where's clever because that people don't realize like like Las Vegas people. There's a lot of FOMO. Uh, light living in life. Excuse me. Um, still suffering the consequences of that food point. Uh, there's, there's a lot, there, there's a lot to do in Las Vegas outside of, you know, the typical assumptions of like shows yeah. and, and slots and things like that. There's so much natural beauty and, you know, hiking and, mm-hmm. and camping and trail blazing and all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah. So the I, whole I desert, think, yeah, the whole desert Southwest is like, stupid cool and and we decided to go there to get away from everything so yeah we'll we're gonna we're gonna start chatting about that and talk about the planning process and Mm -hmm. some of the things you might be able to do out there and where you might want to travel to um support your local artisans how to support your local artisans um and in you know and and maybe seeing it all in one go isn't the greatest idea or you should take more time to do it but we'll talk about that when we get there yep exactly so anyway so coming up Coming up, we're going to start talking about the four corners and uh, yeah, be uh, yeah, stay tuned, stay tuned. And, and thank you once again to everybody who actually has, has listened to us through uh, what is now four episodes. Um, high five. High fives. Uh, we are still looking for a name, by the way. So if you've got <laughs> any suggestions, the Trippy podcast ain't doing it for me. So yeah, me neither. It's just too podcast obvious. Podcast at trippy.com. Let us know what your suggestions might be. And same email address if you have any interest on coming on our show to talk about, I don't know, literally anything. Have you ever traveled? Have you ever been on a road trip? Have you ever visited places in your city that you're like, I think people should know about this. I mean, yeah. literally anything. So you be the expert in the room. 
reach out to us. Let us know what you're interested in and what you'd like to talk about. And let's get you interviewed. People can only hear so much of us and, and we, we should have big to differ. We should have, <laughs> no, I like the sound of my own voice. I don't <laughs> Um, I actually like the sound of your voice too. No, thank you. It's very rich and sonorous on this this beautiful it road really setup. Is. We should, you know, we've never shouted out road. We've never once shouted out. What's to shout out? Ro- it's a microphone company. Ooh, I'm kidding. Kill Based in Australia, I think. I think. Yes, like, yeah. they are Oz. But we use all their stuff. We've got yeah, we've got heaps. We got, of, we got, like, we got uh, road coming out the wazoo. So we, yeah, if uh, if anybody over at Road's watching this, you know, give us a shout and. Um, yeah. Let us know if you got any other equipment you'd like to to share with us and, and anything we should be checking out for sure. But um, just beta test your hardware. Go for it. Hit it. Yeah. Do we're, it. We're up to. Uh, are we gonna? Okay. Yeah, so now we're it. now we're gonna take it home. Let's take it home. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna need your help on this though. All right. So like, yeah. I'm, make sure I'm not missing anybody. We we already talked about. Uh, yeah, we had some really great links on here. Um, you'll find those all in the content description. Down at the bottom there, obviously. Along um, with the email addresses to reach along with the out email if you have any questions or want to get on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, in, indeed, indeed. Um, it's been a really uh, fun and informative episode, I hope. And um, again, we thank you all for joining us. Uh, I just realized I didn't have my quote pulled up. So now I've got to go and do that. Uh, inspirational quote to take us out. <laughs> Oh Where boy! Did the music go. What happened? Uh, somebody hit a pad. That's so funny. <sighs> it is. It is a good song. Still in the experimentation phase, for sure. I had a really good one for this, though. You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. This quote from Les Brown. So think about that when you're setting your travel goals and your travel dreams. And uh, yeah, till next time, let's have an adventure. <laughs>